Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use QGIS as a viewer for geotagged photos and I'm also going to show you how this makes it a really super powerful and useful tool for anyone like a geologist or an ecologist who is collecting data in the field. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward in QGIS 3 as I'm running here. Um, you go to the processing toolbox, you open it up, you type in geotag which I've already got typed here and then that gives you import geotag photos double click on that opens up a dialogue you select import folder where your photos are mine are in this field photos geotag you can see all the images there open that you can choose an output name if you want for now I'm just going to create a temporary layer and then you press run what this does is it reads some of the header data within the photos where the latitude and longitude are stored and it pulls that out and it turns it into a layer in the GIS. There we go, that's finished. So here now are all of our photos. And if we look at the attribute table, we can see that we have a table which has a column for photo, which is the full path to the picture, and also file name directory, and then some of the information about where the picture were taken, altitude, longitude, latitude, timestamp whatever. So that's pretty nice, our pictures are in, but it's good if we can have some context. So to do that, a nice thing to do it in QGIS is to get some kind of web base map. And the nice web base maps you can get by having quick map services. So if you open this up and you search for quick map services, there you go, I've already installed, but you can install it here and then you get that, close that. And what that gives you in your web drop down is a quick map services toolbar. You can see here I've got lots and lots of layers. You don't get these by default but I'll show you how you do that. If you go to settings then it opens up an option where you can get these extra layers. So you go to more services and you do get contribute back and then you get the latest versions. And so when you've got that you can get the one which is pretty nice for this area, which is Bing Satellite. If you look at that, there we go, satellite map for Bing in the background. So if you look, this is Iraviokut, this is a volcano in southeast Iceland, and these are a load of photos I've got from fieldwork that I did there. So this is a little bit distorted though, um, and we can do that, that's because of the projection that the maps use. So the projection is the way that a 3D spherical earth gets mapped onto a flat screen. And the way they do it with the GPS is different to the way that they've done it in the satellite images, which uses a kind of pseudo mercator. So if I type in pseudo mercator here, if I can remember how you spell it, there we go. And then I select that. Then what we find is there we go. Now we've got proper shape. So here we go. And these are our pictures. Um, this is all the locations the photos are from. However, it would be handy if we could actually see them. So to do that, if we come in here and we go to our properties, QGIS has a thing called map tips. And a map tip is something that appears when you hover your mouse over a point. And the HTML map tips let you put in HTML, which is markup like websites are made of, um, and you can do things that websites can do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this bit of HTML here and in this we've got fields with percents like file name and photo and these are the attributes of our of our GIS layer and we've got HTML so we've got file name BR is a line break and then we've got image source so this is going to take in our image of our photos file name and it's going to set it to a width of 200 which is like a thumbnail and we're wrapping it in these A tags with the href, which basically turns that into a link. And what that means is when you click on the picture, it will open up on your computer. So we'll take that and we will paste it in here like this. OK. And now you also have to go up to view here and you have to make sure that show map tips is enabled. And if it is, then you should be at the stage where you can hold your mouse over a point and you can see your picture and not only that but then if you click on the picture it will open up 
inside your computer and you can look at it in more detail. So there we go, that's pretty sweet. So that's a pretty simple way in which you can view geotag flows. Now, for field work, it's useful to have a little bit more context. So you want to know which of these locations these pictures was taken. So if we go to here and we go back to your plugins again and you make sure that the GPS tools plugin switched on, then you can go to your vector menu and GPS tools is here. And when you go to GPS tools, you can load the GPX file. So we'll take here, this is from my Garmin eTrex, hit OK. We'll just take out the waypoints and we'll press OK. And here we go. Now we've got this layer for our waypoints. Now let's just do a bit of styling on that. So if we go to the properties here and we want to label it. So we're just going to give it a single label and that is going to be on the name. And we're just going to put a text buffer around the label a bit to make it a bit easier to see. And then there we go, that's a bit easier to see that. And then for the symbol, let's just give it a different symbol. Let's give it, rather than a round one, let's give it an X. And maybe that's a bit big, and maybe that's a bit small. That looks about right. There we go. Okay, so now we know the locations where our photos were taken. We'll put that underneath. But what would be really useful and what's really nice would be if we could know what the geology was like at these places, what had we actually done? And so that's where um, we can do that if you follow this important tip, which I think is basically the best thing you can do if you're doing field work. And that is whenever you're in the field, whenever you've finished at an outcrop or a site and you've got all your notes written up, take out your camera and while you're at the spot, take a picture of your notebook and make sure that that picture is geotagged in the location where you are. Because then that means you can have notebook pictures in the location. And I'll show you how good that is if we just rename this one. So we rename this one and we'll just call this one outcrop because that's a picture of the rocks. And then we go back to our processing toolbar and we go to import again. And this time we go to the notebook folder and we bring these in. Okay, they didn't all come in, but that's fine. We'll rename this one as notebook. Now QGIS has this really cool function where you can take a style and you can copy it. So we're just going to copy our map tip from here and we can paste it into here. There we go. And that means now when we're looking at our notebook layer, we can mouse over and we can see our notebook. And just change the color of that to make it a bit easier to distinguish. There we go. Right, now, if we bring all of these things back in, I'll show you why that's so good. Because if we come in to say this outcrop here, 407, so all of this grey stuff here is volcanic pumice and ash from a past eruption. Here's site 407. And we can have a look at some outcrop. So we see here that we've got this sent section. Here's a hole in the ground. Let's have a look. There we go. So we've got different layers in here. Well, I wonder what they are. Well, now if we look at our notebook from here and bring that up, then we get our notebook picture from site 407. We can rotate that around and then we can look at these two side by side. And so then we can see straight away that we've got 60 centimetres of medium ash with a dark band at about 20 centimetres. And there we go. And so that is a pretty powerful thing. If you know that you can go to your map and you can see what the geology is in each place, and not only the geology, but you can see the notes that you made. Okay. Thank you very much.